We continue in St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, and our title of this morning's message is Be a Light Bringer, Part 2. Let's pick it up at first, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Lord, I ask in your name, in a way that only you can do it, bless this scripture to our transformation this morning. Not just to our hearing, but to our following. It is in your name we pray, Jesus. In one of my preaching journals, it went on a Star Trek theme. This Friday, Star Trek Beyond is going to be in the movie theaters. And I have a confession to make to you. Star Trek started in 1966. It's 50 years old. I was six years old, and I have never in my life seen an episode of Star Trek. I have never, I have always changed the channel. When I saw Spock and Kirk, I switched the channel. I've never been to the theater to see a Star Trek movie. Original mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek new, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Wow. The storyline for Star Trek Beyond is this. We got no ship, says Captain Kirk, no crew. 
How are we going to get out of this one? The one thing that's cool about this is they find hope in the impossible. Why do I bring this up? Because whether you love Star Trek or not, it's exciting. There's some exciting storylines. I'm, I'm sure there are. Um, I just always switch the channel. Whether you're on a Star Trek or not, if you're in this sanctuary right now, God is calling you to be on a Jesus Trek. Amen. Amen. We're to be on a Jesus Trek. Our mission, to be a part of the kingdom of God, to care for one another, to share the gospel, and to live the good news. Amen. We're on a Jesus Trek. And Colossians chapter 1 tells us a lot about this Jesus track. We have an inheritance from God. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His Son, of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We're on a Jesus track. And there's three things that St. Paul brings out about our Jesus track. The first is, Jesus is the creator. All things have been created through him and for him. Now, right in our pew Bible, one of the coolest things is, when you're in Colossians 1, it says, C.P. John 1 through 4, I believe. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. It concludes, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot Put it out. That's our inheritance. Jesus is our creator. When we boldly go where no one has gone before, we find that Jesus has already been there. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Verse 17. In places that are distant from family and friends, Jesus is there. I've got one word to say about that this morning. Guatemala. I thank God that Jesus is there. In times of pain and suffering, Jesus is there. In valleys of deep darkness, Jesus is there. The light of Jesus shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Our Jesus track. Jesus is our creator. Second thing, Jesus is our redeemer. Verse 21, estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. That's every one of us. Separation from God, but we're reconciled, put back in right relationship. We're redeemed. We're delivered from sin. God works through Jesus to reconcile himself to himself all things, whether in earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. To receive this gift of forgiveness, we need to believe in Jesus and to have faith in him. To trust God. To trust Jesus. Our Lord is our Redeemer. The one who offers us redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He gives us power to love our enemies, to work for peace. Even in very difficult situations. United Methodist Men had a Bible study yesterday. I had to miss a significant portion of it. But the part I did get to and the, the wonderful handout that was sent out, Speaking of difficult situations, a tragic electrical accident on Christmas Day, 1947, cost a man named Philip Rushing both of his arms. Imagine life without arms. Though grieved and angered over the loss, Rushing later committed his life to Christ, and he prayed this, from now on, Lord, Help me to rejoice in what I have. Not weep 
over what I don't have. He resolved to accept this condition as God's will and to live a productive life in spite of his handicap. After rehabilitation and training, Rushing went on to be a distinct to went on to his distinguished career. Social work, Chicago Housing Authority. Special assistance to the commissioner of the Health Services and Mental Health Administration in Washington, D.C. Director of Human Relations for the Illinois Department of Public Aid. And a, a bunch of other other great things that, that he was able to do. Rushing's comments on the life he lived without the use of his arms. There was a life much worse than an armless life. And then, this man without arms, he said in all the troubles that he came across, People without love, respect, integrity, freedom, or purpose. He said it was all attributed to one thing. One thing. And he said, Philip Rushing said this, that the troubles were caused by life without God. You hear me? Life without God. Jesus. Jesus is our creator. Jesus is a creator. Jesus is our redeemer. He, he's bought it all back for us. And third thing is Jesus is our sustainer. I have a better way to put it. Jesus is our power. Jesus Christ is our power source. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We had a Lent Bible study once early in my ministry this. It was by Maxie Dunham. And there was a memory verse. It was Colossians 1.27. And this is how Maxie Dunham wanted us to remember this verse of Scripture. If you remember one thing today, just remember this. The secret is simply this. Christ in you. Yes, Christ in you. Bringing with him the hope of all the glorious things to come. The secret is simply this. Christ in you. Yes, Christ in you. Bringing with him the hope of all the glorious things to come. That God has a plan. And the plan is to implant the living, resurrected Jesus Christ into each of our hearts. And it changes everything. It changes everything. God wants to sustain us. God wants to power us up. False gods want to deplete us. God calls us to be on a Jesus track. Now, interestingly, St. Paul cuts to the chase really quick. He says, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. He gets to the chase really quick. He says, you're going to need patience. And St. Paul then talks about suffering in his own life. Which, if you want to talk about St. Paul's suffering, read 2 Corinthians 9, which just describes the ordeal that he went through. St. Paul writes this letter while he is in prison. While he's locked up on a Jesus track, the promise for us is to live faithfully, to be a part of the greatest story ever told, and to have eternal life. A couple of months ago, I mentioned a guy named Father Greg Boyle. He has something called Homeboy Industries. Father Greg Boyle works with gangs. He works with gangs. He has a great TED Talk. Not for the faint of heart. I mean, this is a minister of God. The TED Talk's a great TED Talk, but it's not for the faint of heart because he has to use some really rough language. Father Greg Boyle says this, that tenderness 
is the mark of mature Christian spirituality. Imagine that. Doesn't that bring us to, to our knees? But then he also says this line. You go, does God want anything from me? God, what do you want from me? Father Greg Boyle says, God doesn't want from us. God wants for us. And when we go to the Lord and realize that God doesn't want from us, that God wants for us, it changes everything. And St. Paul counsels us on our Jesus track that when we get into hard times, we'll find ourselves very connected to Jesus. Very connected to Jesus. And part of the Christian walk is the importance of of patience. If ours is a God who is, is, these are Father Greg Boyle's words, if ours is a God who is too busy loving us to be disappointed in us, then manage, imagine what that means for your ministry or being. Imagine if ours was a God who didn't want anything from us, but only wanted for us, then suddenly all the walls and doors are open. Often we don't know what God is doing. Four young men were sitting by their dying father. The dad said to them, There is treasure buried in the field. And he died. The sons, Dad, Dad, where? Where is he? He had gone to be with the Lord. So the sons took out pickaxes. They attacked that field. They dug. They plowed. They furrowed. They went in that they went at that field like never before. And to their dismay and chagrin, they never found the treasure. Oh, they were crushed. But next year they had the richest harvest that field ever produced. They had a bumper crop. The men's Bible study. This guy lost his job. He was defeated for the legislature. I can't give you the dates yet. Failed in business, elected the legislature, had nervous breakdown. Defeated for speaker, elected to Congress, lost renomination. Rejected for land officer, defeated for Senate. Defeated for nomination for vice president. Again, defeated for senate. You know who I'm talking about, right? Take a guess. Truman. Lincoln. Elected president, 1860. Lincoln. Lincoln. He said this. He summed up his faith. God selects his own instruments, and sometimes they are queer ones. For instance, he chose me to steer the ship through a great crisis. In Abraham, one of Abraham Lincoln's lines was that we can learn to say, with God's help, I shall not fail when we're on a mission from God. With God's help, I shall not fail. And so St. Paul commends to us today not a Star Trek, but a Jesus Trek. With Jesus our Creator, Jesus our Redeemer, forgives our sins, helps us to hit the reset button, and Jesus who gives us power. Power when we need patience. Power when we go through challenging times and gives us most of all the hope of the gospel. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we love you and we need you this morning. We thank you for the Jesus track which you commend to each of us. We love you, Lord. Help each of us in our Jesus track. 
and at Asbury United Methodist Church in our Jesus track together. Help us, Jesus. We ask this in your name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you.